Vitamin D is sometimes called a sunshine vitamin because it's produced in your skin in response to sunlight. It is a fat-soluble vitamin in a family of compounds that includes vitamin D1, D2, and D3. Sunlight absorbed through the skin is boosting your immune system. All light on Earth, plants, bacteria, and mammals, they primarily depend on sun for its life force. So in humans, as our skin absorbs middle of the day sun, it produces vitamin D. As absorbed and stored light in the body, it allows the organism to create a skeletal system. Vitamin D helps your body absorb calcium and phosphorus to make your bones and teeth healthy and stronger. Today, many people experience excess inflammation. We see that every day in bleeding gums. You should not spontaneously bleed. And if your immune system is too reactive, it is not as effective as can be. The immune system is like an army that prevents invaders such as viruses and bacteria from taking over the homeland, which is your body. It is composed of the innate and adaptive immune system. It can, be, it can happen in the lungs, the gut, or any organs in the body. So here's the scenario, guys. Your first line of defense is your innate immune system. You have soldiers shooting indiscriminately at enemy's camp. Vitamin D boosts its first response. So it also boosts the body's second more specialized event defenses. Next, the SWAT teams are brought in with specific abilities to target and eliminate the bacteria or viruses. So they have powerful weapons and a body is designed to turn them on and off and quickly turn them off when it, when it needs to. The issue is when there is a chronic inflammation, the weapons don't turn off and it creates friendly fire. Vitamin D actually causes adaptive immune system. It keeps these specialized attack weapons ready to perform and never acting out inappropriately. So as you absorb sunlight, you are boosting both of these defenses. Some health conditions and medications can also make it more difficult for someone to absorb vitamin D. So this includes kidney disease, liver disease, some types of cancer, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, chronic inflammatory diseases, um, anti-seizure medications, medications for HIV and AIDS, gastro bypass surgery. And these are just some that we are naming that can affect the absorption of vitamin D. The following table provides rough ranges for low, normal, and high vitamin D levels for the average adult in nanograms per milliliter. The symptoms of vitamin D deficiency can be subtle, but the classic symptoms are bone aches and muscle weakness. How does it affect oral health? There is some evidence that gum disease is related to vitamin D deficiency. If the patient is scheduled for surgery such as implants, it is important to check the vitamin D levels. This can affect healing and prognosis of the surgery. One way is by introducing food items in your diet that boost your vitamin D levels. Eat mushrooms that grow in UV light or eat fatty fish at least twice a week. You can also look into drinking milk or orange juice that has been fortified with vitamin D. Eggs and butter are a great breakfast combination. If you don't get that much sunlight, where you live, try sparing at least 10 to 15 minutes out walking outside really early in the morning for optimum sunlight without harsh UV rays. A person should also see their doctor if they notice symptoms of a lack of vitamin D. A doctor may do a physical exam, ask questions, or perform a blood test to see if the person has a deficiency. In this vitamin D testing device, it will come with a reader, a single-use needle, a, a test, and a buffer. And that's what we were going to be using to test the patient's vitamin D levels. So I'm going to check my vitamin D levels with you guys today. So before we take any blood, we want to wipe that finger with alcohol. Use a 2 by 2 The needle is one-time use. So it's going to be a little bit of owie. Okay. So you want to get enough blood, right? There's a little pipette, which is also single use. There is a line that tells you where to stop. That, that's the amount of blood that we will need. Once we get enough blood, we'll put it into the well that's for blood. And you can tell where to put it because it's a blood, blood picture. And once we have the blood in the well, we want to take the buffer and leave that into 
on the bottom well. So three drops of the buffer. And then we're going to wait 10 minutes for the results. After 10 minutes, we'll know what my vitamin D levels are. And we will use the vitamin D reader. And there's also a card to calibrate the reader to make sure we have more accurate reading. So we'll see what I have in 10 minutes. Usually during the 10 minutes, I would educate my patients about vitamin D and oral health. So a normal range would be between 50 and up. And my results were 71 nanograms per milliliter.